Purchasing power parity. What determines the nominal exchange rate? First, we need to understand arbitrage. The practice of exploiting price differences between markets for a profit. Suppose you found out that bananas are selling for more in one community, in Waterford, than they are in a neighboring community, Passageford. Well, then you can make some money, can't you? You can buy bananas in, in Passageford, walk them up to Waterford, sell them for the greater amount, and then get back your initial amount plus the profit, walk them back down to Passage for buy some more bananas, and keep going around in this way until that price difference goes away. The thing is, the exploitation of that price discrepancy is the thing that makes it go away. The arbitrage opportunity contains the seeds of the elimination of the opportunity. Because exploiting the arbitrage opportunity increases the demand for the product where it is cheaper, and so the price will rise, and increases the supply of it where it is more expensive, so the price will fall. And until they become equal, then the incentive persists to keep increasing the demand and increasing the supply to make it go away. This leads us to the law of one price. A commodity should sell for the same price in all markets subject to arbitrage. This is taking account of any real differences in value between the two locations. You're not going to get a hand of bananas, say, selling for actually the same price in a crowded, hot downtown market and in a air-conditioned, wide-aisled supermarket in a wealthy neighborhood with ample parking. Because included in the price of the bananas, in the fancy supermarket is the cost of the air conditioning and the sales staff and the parking lot. But if you were to unbundle those extras, then the bananas themselves would be selling for a similar price. So here's a, here's a game. I will presume that the viewer is from neither Honduras or Barbados. And if you are from neither country, and I presume that you know little about each of those, these two countries, I'm going to give you one bit of information about each of these two countries. The information is the price of a plain t-shirt. If all you know about Honduras and Barbados is that a t-shirt sells for 105 lempiras, the currency in, in Honduras, a t-shirt sells for 105 lempiras in Honduras and 15 Barbadian dollars in Barbados. If that's all you know about these two countries, I would like you to guess what is the exchange rate between Lempiras and Barbadian dollars. And whenever I ask this question in a live classroom, it doesn't take long for most students to guess that the exchange rate is seven Lempiras to one Barbadian dollar. And you make this guess because you intuitively believe in the concept of purchasing power parity. It makes sense to you that a given amount of money should buy the same quantity of commodities 
in each country. And that's the idea behind purchasing power parity. Now suppose that the actual exchange rate is not consistent with the idea of purchasing power parity. Suppose the actual exchange rate were 10 Lempiras to one Barbadian dollar. Well then, once again, you see a money-making opportunity. You can buy some t-shirts in Honduras, walk them over to Barbados, okay, swim. And when you get to Barbados, those t-shirts that you bought for the equivalent of $10.50 Barbadian dollars, you can sell for 15 Barbadian dollars in Barbados, which makes you a handsome profit. And you take your initial investment and profit back to Honduras, and you can repeat the cycle. But for you to carry out this arbitrage, you need to engage in a foreign exchange transaction. In each cycle, you need to sell Barbadian dollars and buy Honduran Lempiras. And that, as in the case of the bananas earlier, is going to set in motion a process which is going to eliminate the arbitrage opportunity. At 10 for 1, you are making a profit by selling Barbadian dollars and buying Lempiras. So we represent this as the foreign exchange market in Honduras, in which case Barbadian dollars is the foreign exchange in Honduras. So every time you do a cycle, you're bringing Barbadian dollars back to sell in the foreign exchange market. You are exporting Honduran t-shirts, supplying Barbadian dollars with the proceeds of your exports, and that shifts the, the M minus X curve to the left. The net demand for foreign exchange for trade purposes is going to be less because you have increased exports. And that is going to cause the exchange rate to fall from 10 to 1. And until the arbitrage opportunity is closed, it will keep falling until the exchange rate gets to purchasing power parity, which is 7 to 1. So the purchasing power parity exchange rate is a useful concept. How do you calculate it? Well, since you worked out that the purchasing power parity exchange rate was 7 to 1, you already know how to do this. What you did was you divided 105 lempiras by 15. And that's how you got 7. So, purchasing power parity is not about t-shirts or any other particular product. It's really about all production in one country versus another, all goods and services. So, if you are trying to calculate the actual purchasing power parity exchange rate in two currency areas, then you would need to get a representative basket, we call it, of goods and services, and price it in each of the two countries. So if you did so in Mexico, and your representative basket of goods and services would cost 252 pesos, and then you price the same goods and services in Trinidad and Tobago, and you got 120 TT dollars, then the PPP exchange rate would be 2.1 pesos to a TT dollar. Why is that useful? It is useful 
Because as we have discovered, if the exchange rate is not at PPP, then there exists an arbitrage opportunity. And the exploitation of that arbitrage opportunity will move the exchange rate towards purchasing power parity. So in this case, if the exchange rate is greater than 2.1, this is an indication that over time the exchange rate is going to fall. Whereas if the current exchange rate is below 2.1, then it's an indication that over time it's going to rise. Now, there's a lot of detail left out here. We have ignored in this explanation the cost of moving goods from one place to another. High transportation cost relative to the gain of the arbitrage opportunity, the difference in the price levels, is going to prevent the exploitation of the arbitrage opportunity for relatively small differences. What is more, not all goods are tradable. So the idea that actual exchange rates move, move towards purchasing power parity is not, is not a tendency you're going to observe for small differences in the cost of goods and services between two currency areas and, and not a tendency you're going to observe over short periods of time. Especially considering that in many countries, a lot of the demand and supply for foreign exchange is not even related to just the trade in goods and services. So this idea that exchange rates are going to move towards purchasing power parity is one that only gives you value if you are looking at relatively large divergences of the exchange rate from the PPP exchange rate and if you observe it over long periods of time. But for large differences and over long periods of time, it gives you a pretty good guide. Here's an example from the Ghanaian SETI. Here is the actual exchange rate over a 20 year period. This index of the actual exchange rate shows that the exchange rate has increased by, by quite a lot over this time period. Why do you think the exchange rate has risen so much? Well, maybe PPP can help us. Over that same time period, a representative basket of goods and services in Ghana increased in cost by 15% per year. That was their inflation rate. The inflation rate in the United States over the same period averaged 2% per year. So what that tells you is that the exchange rate that would correspond to purchasing power parity has been increasing by an average of 13% per year every year over that period. And we have said that for large movements, for large differences between the actual rate and the purchasing power parity rate, the actual rate will move towards it. So, back to the exchange rate between the Ghanaian SETI and the US dollar. If we calculate the PPP exchange rate over the same period, we see that the actual rate actually tracked it pretty closely. The reason why the exchange rate rose by so much and so consistently was because it was chasing PPP which was rising 
at a high rate over that period. Our takeaway is that purchasing power parity is able to explain the behavior of the nominal exchange rate for large changes in the nominal exchange rate in the long run.